Hello, grade seven. Good morning. So we are now going to have your literature class. You still have me. I am teacher Frances. Are you ready, grade seven? Good to know. All right, now you should prepare your things. What will we need? You should have with you your student anthology book, a pen, and your literary companion. Do you have them right now? Great! All right, let us have first our review. Do you still remember the title of our selection last week? Okay, it was about what? Uh -huh. The ancient Middle East, and it is being subdivided into different sections, remember? All right, and we also studied about objective summary. I even asked you in the writing part to make your own summary. Okay, you tried to present central ideas and most important details in a text. Now, grade 7, we are going to have another selection, but this time, our lesson will be about three different articles about Pluto. Are you ready? Alright, here we go. Open your student anthology on pages 352 until 369. Get ready. Our goal or objectives for today, we have, say, I can compare different texts having same topic. And I can answer the critical thinking questions. All right, let's start. As what we are used to do, we should have first your unlocking of difficulties. These is the set of words that you will encounter as you read those three different articles. Here they are. So, for our first word, we have the word demoted. Say, demoted. Good. It is a verb which means move down in rank. Say, demoted. The second word, we have the word stellar. Say, stellar. Great. This is an adjective, which means relating to the stars. Say, stellar. Excellent. All right, students, our next word, say, terrestrial. Once more, say, terrestrial. Excellent. Its part of speech is an adjective, which means on or having to do with earth or the land features of earth. That's terrestrial. For our next word, we have the word objectionable. Say, objectionable. Great! This is also an adjective, which means causing disapproval or distasteful or simply means saying no. That's objectionable. Next word, say synonymous. All right. It is an adjective which means sharing a name or meaning with something else. Just like the words shop and store, as you can see, they share the same meaning, great, though they are different words, just like pretty and beautiful. Those are synonymous. Say synonymous. How about this word? Say, designated. Again, designated. Good job. This is a verb which means assigned a name, label, category, or position. Just like me now. I am your teacher for now. I am designated as your teacher. All right. Say designated. Great. Moving on, we have the word enthusiasts. Say enthusiasts. 
It is a noun referring to people who enjoy or are excited about a particular topic. Say, enthusiasts. Good job! How about our next word? Say, laborious. Once more, say laborious. Alright, this is an adjective requiring a great deal of work, often a dull or tiresome nature. Take a look at the GIF. It says there, over it, because it's so laborious. Next word, we have rational. Say rational. It is a noun which means reasoning or a basis for a belief or action. Say rational. All right, students. After knowing our set of vocabulary, remember them because you will encounter them as you read these three different articles. The first one is Peculiar Pluto from NASA Space Place. The second one, In a Planet or Not Debate, some astronomers say, Long Live Planet Pluto. And the third one, Why Pluto is No Longer a Planet. Are you ready? Open now your book. Your student anthology on pages 352 until 369. Now, flip your page on 352. Your first article is entitled, Peculiar Pluto from NASA Space Place. By the way, what is NASA? Great. NASA is an acronym for... National Aeronautics Space Administration. To give you a background, NASA Space Place is a science-based educational web site run by the National Aeronautics Space Administration known as NASA in the United States. Geared to students in elementary school, this website aims to simplify challenging scientific concepts and make them easier to understand. NASA is the U.S. government agency responsible for space-related research and exploration. So many of the concepts on NASA Space Place relate to NASA's mission, such as the New Horizons Space Probe, launched in 2006 to explore the outer regions of our solar system. Now, as you read, identify the features indicating in this text. Are you ready? All right. Your next article is In a planet or not debate, some astronomers say, Long live planet Pluto. You can find this in your student anthology pages 358 until 353. From Pluto's discovery in 1930 until the year 2006, the solar system was thought to have nine planets. Pluto was the smallest. A meeting of the International Aeronautic Union, known as IAU in 2006, changed this. At that meeting, Pluto was officially moved to the newly created category of dwarf planet, and the number of true planets in the solar system went down to eight. This decision was controversial among astronomers. Some were unhappy with Pluto's removal from its former status as a planet. Again, as you read, look for the ways in which the tone or the point of this article differs from the first one that you have read entitled Peculiar Pluto. Now, students, you will be having your third article entitled Why Pluto is No Longer a Planet. You can find it in your student anthology, pages 364 until 369. Though for a while Pluto held the record as the smallest planet in the solar system, it had to give up its title to Mercury in year 2006. In that year, astronomers redefined Pluto as a dwarf planet, part of a large group of objects in the distant and mysterious Kuiper belt. As technology advances, scientists hope to find more of these Kuiper Belt objects and learn more about the outer reaches of our solar system. 
Now, you have to keep in your mind what you have read on the first two articles. And also, as you read this third article, take note, keep in your mind of the new information for this. Take your time. Moving on, how's your reading? All right, you have three different articles, but the same topic, having same topic, which is all about Pluto. Very good. Now, I guess you are ready for our critical thinking questions. Open your student anthology on page 370. Get your pen also. For our first critical thinking question, explain why did astronomers decide to reclassify Pluto as a dwarf planet, considering that before it is regarded as nine planets, why did they consider it as dwarf planet? Think of your answer. Start writing now. Great. So, astronomers discovered other similarly sized objects in the solar system. So Pluto no longer stood out for its size. Also, astronomers redefined what a planet is. It now has to dominate its orbit, clearing other objects from it, something that Pluto has not done. Got it? Good job! Now, for our number two, infer the story of Pluto's change in status was discussed not only among scientists, but also in the popular press, the media, the news. Based on what you have learned in the three selections, why do you think that this story was reported widely in the media? Start writing your answer. Great! It could be at school, people had learned that Pluto was a planet. Now, it is widely accepted fact had changed, which is interesting news. So, people may have felt sad for tiny Pluto the way we feel sad when any underdog is defeated. Another interesting part of the story. Number three, predict. Consider what you have read about present and future research into Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. Remember the Kuiper Belt? Alright, what kinds of information might an article on Pluto contain 10 years from now? So we're talking about the future article. Okay, a future article on Pluto might list additional Kuiper Belt objects and perhaps even the discovery of another planet. The article also might discuss new types of spacecraft and future missions to this part of our solar system. So now for number four, we have to analyze. All three selections are about Pluto, isn't it? Okay, so the first question is, does each one make the same point about this topic? Are they all the same? And the next one, if so, what is that point? And if not, what main point is made in each selection? So we have to decipher to discuss them one by one. Think of your answer. All right. It could be? No, the selections do not make the same point. And for letter B, the first selection provides fascinating facts about Pluto to young readers. The second discusses how to define a planet and whether Pluto should be considered one. And the third article gives a history of the discovery of Pluto and explores how understanding of it changed over time. We are now on the last two questions. Number five, make a judgment. Which selection do you think is best suited to readers who need basic introductory information about Pluto, those who are still studying? 
gathering basic information about Pluto. Explain your answer. What do you think? Where among those three? All right, it could be the first, which is entitled Peculiar Pluto. It gives an overview of Pluto's size, temperature, location, and orbit. It explains what the Kuiper Belt is like and describes the New Horizon mission. It tells why Pluto is no longer considered a planet without making a debate, isn't it? All right. The last one we have to evaluate. Which position do you find more convincing? That Pluto should be classified as a planet or that it should not? Support your opinion with textual evidence from at least one selection. Okay, you have to lift from the selection that you have read where this will stand as your evidence in explaining your side. Okay. It could be, according to Nadia Drake, quoting what this author said, some people define a planet as a spherical lump of matter that formed around stars or stellar remnants as part of the evolution of those star or remnants. You could tell I agree with this view, which clarifies Pluto as a planet. Also, Drake cites the many terms of planet-like objects and mentions an astronomer who feels it was wrong to add yet another term, dwarf planet. Good job, kids! Alright, let's now answer your student anthology pages 220 until 223. Prepare your book and your pen. Now, we have your reading skill, compare text, and multimedia. Whenever we have an informational text, we could try to express or present it in different ways, isn't it? We could have what? You could have this one by one, isn't it? You could have graphics alone. You could have written text alone. You could have video. You could have interactive activities. You could have audio. But in this way or medium, we have multimedia. They are all coming up together as one. An example of this could be what you have studied before your PowerPoint presentation. All right, but make sure you will include Maybe not all, some of this. Alright? Creating a multimedia experience can be as simple as adding graphics and photos to a piece of writing to make two mediums, the text and visual elements. Work together. Multimedia can also be complex, combining audio elements such as music and voice over narration with video and interactive features. Just like what I'm doing with you right now. So, for short, you are going to have multimedia in presenting a text. Got it? Alright, for the given instructions, so number one, we have to read the, the passage. Then we have to write the answer on the box. The first one, Pluto is only about half the width of the country United States. And Sharon is about half the size of Pluto. Could you still remember Sharon on the text? Sharon is the big what? Moon. Great. So, the question is, does the diagram enhance your understanding of the information in the text? You have to explain yes or no. Alright, great. So, it's a yes. The picture and text work well together. Each makes Pluto's size clear. In its own way, helping me understand these facts. And that is how small the Pluto is. Good job! Alright, with our second excerpt last week, the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics revisited the perennial debate over how to define a planet and whether icy Pluto qualifies. Three accomplished experts weighed in, in at the event. Two pro-planet, one anti-planet. 
So imagine you are going to make a video to accompany this text. What details would you include and explain your choices? Great. So, first, I zoom in on the conference building to show the setting. Next, briefly present photos or pictures and names of the three experts, those three who weighed in, the two pro-planet and the one anti-planet. And then, capture the event in the session revealing the drama or the debate that happened. Good work! Okay, students, take note of this. Number three will serve as your homework. Got it? View a video about Pluto. You can go over the internet. There's a lot. Describe two features of this presentation that help you better understand the topic. You might be asking me, teacher, what are those features again? Do you still remember the diagram? All right, it could be the graphics. It could be the text. It could be the audio, it could be the video itself, and so on and so forth. Alright students, now we are on your page 222 and 223 of your student anthology. We are going to analyze texts about the same topic. So, all throughout our reading, we have three different articles, and all of them talk about what? Great, about Pluto. Now, whenever we have this kind of informational texts, we have to bear in our mind two things. Alright? First, look for the purpose. Say purpose. Great. The second one, say audience. Okay. Whenever we say purpose, this is the reason. The reason why did the author write it or the goal. And the second one, the audience. For whom this text is written? Is it for young ones, for the children, for a professional, for one who is already acquainted with this kind of topic, or for a beginner? And these two things, what are those again? Great! The purpose and the audience could be written directly over the text as you read or it could be implied, meaning, what does it mean? You have to analyze, to understand first before you will know. Because it's not directly written over the text or in the text. Taking, considering this first example, let's read. A while back, Pluto was the ninth planet from the sun. It was also the smallest one, but not anymore. Poor Pluto. Just how did it get kicked out of our family of planets? Now, considering this number one, we can tell a short sentence about this. It, we could also have vocabulary or a word. So, Pluto has been kicked out rather than the word ejected or expelled or removed. Right? And the planets are described as belonging to a... Just like what people have, we have family. In the text, the word family is used. The author, in this case, probably a group of writers there in NASA. What is NASA again? All right. National Aeronautics, Space, and Administration has the intention to provide easy-to-understand information using a simple language. On the other hand, we have this one. So Ceres and its friends became known as asteroids, meaning star-like. More terms followed, among them minor planets, Plutinos, gas giants, ice giants, Hovian planets, terrestrial planets, ice dwarfs, trans-Neptunian objects, centaurs, and Kuiper belt objects joined an overflowing list of classes. Okay, here, the more challenging words or vocabulary we have, not just how we read it, it's that made it challenging. Also, the meaning, including the technical terms or scientific terms. So, to whom do you think these vocabularies are for? 
All right. It could be for older audience or, or older readers. Can the little ones understand these terms? Of course not. So it seems likely that the author is targeting the readers who already know about Pluto and have a stronger interest learning more about it. Did you have did you get the point of these two different texts? Great. Great students, we are now on page 223. So we have discussed a while ago that whenever we have read an informational text or we are going to write one, we should consider two things. What are those again? Very good. Our The purpose and the audience. So, from the texts that we have read this week, which are Peculiar Pluto, In a Planet or Not Debate, some experts say, Long Live Planet Pluto, and Why Pluto is Not a Planet, we will find out to whom is this for, the audience, and what's the purpose of the writer. Alright, the first one. Peculiar Pluto. For children or for old ones? Great, for children. Children learning about Pluto. Very good. How about in a planet or not debate? All right, for people somewhat familiar with Pluto. How about why Pluto is not a planet? Okay, people wanting to learn different kinds of information about Pluto. Now, we are going to write the purpose. So the first one, to give basic facts considering that the intended audience is children. So, to give basic facts. The who, what, when, where, and how about Pluto in simple language. And for in a bonnet or not debate, we have to explain different opinions since it's a debate in nature. So, different opinions as to whether Pluto should be considered a planet. So, there are, very good, pros and cons or pros and anti. Next one. Why Pluto is not a planet? So, to tell the history of our understanding of Pluto. Because the intended audience is people wanting to learn different information or details regarding this planet. Right, for our continuation, why do you think that Peculiar Pluto does not discuss the fact that Pluto's new status has been controversial? Why do you think? Alright, Peculiar Pluto is written for younger, for the children, with the purpose of providing a rich variety of basic facts, our 4 W's and 1 H. The controversy is too complex, meaning complicated, to include in a work for this audience, considering that they are very good children. And we are now on the last one, review. The first two paragraphs of your third article, Why Pluto is no longer a planet. This is the only selection to describe the work of Clyde W. Tombo. What does this suggest about the author's purpose? Okay, start writing your answer. The author intends for this piece to have a wider focus, which is about the history of our understanding of Pluto. Right? Considering that the planets before are nine, that than the others do. Therefore, it makes sense that the author starts at the beginning with the story of what? Very good. How Tombo discovered Pluto in the first place. Good work, grade 7 students! Alright, to wrap up, this week's lesson on literature, our two-day lesson, we have the contents of the three articles. All of the, them have different points, but referring to one subject or topic, which is about Pluto. Very good. And their similarities and differences to one another. Especially, whenever we have our informational text again, look for what? Very good. 
purpose and audience. And of course, don't forget your homework on page 221, number 3. Thank you, everyone. This has been Teacher Frances.